<laughs> hey, my old friend Spidey! What's going on, man? <laughs> Times are pretty good for you, huh? Got a new movie out. Little kids are loving you everywhere. <laughs> Web slinging. I'm sure that's all fun and great. <laughs> but see, now it's actually time to pay your debts. You see, Activision owns your rights to a video game. And you know what time it is, right? Yet another movie license game. So pop up the money, fighting. I said pop it up. <laughs> And that's Spider-Man 2, folks, coming out to a store near you. You need it. Well, The Amazing Spider-Man 2 is out in theaters, and you know what time it is. It's time for Activision to kick its old workhorse Spider-Man studio, Beanox, in the stomach until it spits out another game for them to milk. You've got to wonder, though, if poor Beanox is just a wee bit tired by now in making Spider-Man games. I mean, they've made Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions, Spider-Man Edge of Time, the amazing Spider-Man movie game, and now the sequel movie game. And they've also at least ported two or three of the older Spider-Man games to PC. Now, ask yourself, is it possible they're getting a little complacent or just freaking tired of the license? Because it really shows in its latest title. It lacks creativity and feels like a retread of what we've already seen a hundred times with little new effort and innovation. The game isn't directly based on the movie, though it does share some similarities like the creation of Electro and a very poor Andrew Garfield look-alike. I know. I mean, I can imagine. And the transformation of Harry Osborn into the Green Goblin. The other cross species, they hurt people. Get out. Kill people. Just get out. I can't give you my blood until I, I know right. it's safe. I can't I trust promise. anyone. I'll find out. I'm on my own. Mr. Osborn, I... No, 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 just, just go. Harry's really at the end of his rope. However, instead of that allowing them to do more and being a strength, it's a weakness. It's unsure of what it wants to do. Does it want to tell a complete story like the movie or one of its own? The plot is all over the place through its 14 missions in about seven hour length. And what it actually ends up feeling like is that each mission exists solely to set up the next boss encounter with characters coming and going haphazardly with little overall narrative. I do appreciate the overabundance of favorite villains like Shocker and Kingpin, Craven the Hunter, who is probably the game's best character other than Spidey. Last question. Is there anything you haven't accomplished yet? Ah, uh, yes. I would like to leave a legacy when I am gone. Pass my training to a protege. My only family is a brother who... Well, he chose a different path. I never had a son, but... Perhaps... Uh, forgive me. I am becoming melancholy as I get older. So, do you have what you need, Mr. Parker? Yeah, I think I do. Uh, but I would have preferred a much more interesting and cohesive story. There's absolutely no mention of Gwen Stacy, a favorite of mine from the comics, no haunting of her father towards Peter, which would have made some really good uh, Max Payne-ish type scenes in the game. And there's no difficult choices to make with tragic consequences. And instead of doing something interesting with like that clock tower or bridge scene with Gwen, Beanox chose to throw her out completely and replace the love interest with Black Cat, who's in pretty much every Spider-Man game with her obligatory flirt with Spider-Man while beating him up sequence. Boring. 
and a complete waste. They even managed to throw in carnage towards the end in a tacked on fan service final level. Oh shit, carnage, yes. I'm all for Carnage, I love him, but I'd like for him to make sense within the story and mean something, not just have it be there for a sake of a stupid cheap way to sell copies to fans. And just like the movie, Carnage is a product of Oscorp in this new trend where everything is Oscorp's fault. Dr. Kafka, is that supposed to happen? No, I'll shut it down. Ugh. However, if all you're looking for is fan service, there's plenty here. And you just may forgive many of the game's shortcomings. Hell, Stan Lee even has a significant role in the game, being the curator of a local comic book shop who has a personal relationship with Peter as a sort of mentor. I actually dig it because I adore Stan Lee. The dude is just plain likable. And the comic book shop idea was a good one. You can visit things that you collect in the city, such as entire comic books to read, figurines of the characters in the game, and even an arcade machine. Unfortunately, the arcade is just a crappy horde mode where you fight endless wave of enemies as long as you're able, but it doesn't take away from the cool idea. It's a shame then that the rest of the game isn't at all as inspired. In fact, it has some extremely puzzling outdated graphics. The game looks like it was from 2007. This individual is a dangerous psychopath. He commits acts of extreme carnage and brutality. The crime scenes are so gruesome, they shock even veteran officers. Many of Beanox's own Spider-Man games managed to look just as good, if not better, than this 2014 release. The only character model that looks decent is Spider-Man in his costume. This is absolutely unacceptable on Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. You'd think for the next generation, they'd be ashamed to parade it out on those consoles, but I guess their thinking is, let's port it to next gen to make sure we maximize the audience it reaches, no matter how shitty it looks. Join the club. You okay? Yeah, it's just, I trusted someone I shouldn't have. Put simply, Amazing Spider-Man 2 is lazy, formulaic, obviously copy and paste, and overall pretty dull. Its best moments are either swinging through the high rises in this alternating left-right trigger mechanic, or when you're working to unlock new interesting Spidey costumes by assaulting underground Russian hideouts that for some reason just have these suits lying around at the end. I actually had more fun while I was doing these side missions than the rest of the entire game combined. You must approach each in careful and thoughtful ways using surprisingly well done stealth mechanics where you can wall crawl and rappel down close to enemies to disable them one at a time while avoiding detection with your spidey sense. That felt right. Some guys work on cars, I work on my Spidey suit. Did it! And all to get this nice little worthwhile reward out of, you know, a brand spanking new costume at the end. If only the rest of the missions and mini games in this game were as fun and as rewarding as these segments are. Everything paramount to making a Spider-Man game, an open world one, great, has either been slapped together or just botched entirely. This includes the combat, the boss battles, and the city itself. Though I must say, 
The combat animations from Spider-Man himself look very cool. They're flashy, they're smooth, they make for some of the best looking Spidey fighting to date. But the actual mechanics behind them are ripped straight from Batman games and poorly duplicated. One button mashing to attack with the occasional dodge button when you see Spider-Man's spidey sense appear above his head. Work up a long enough combo by bashing this one button and you'll get a finishing move where the camera zooms up in close and, and into the action and Spider-Man pulls off this impressive takedown. Help! Let's not fight! Ah, never mind. Let's fight! This simplistic system is perfect for children, and I'm sure some consideration had to have been made for them, but an alternate, deeper control and combo system would have been appreciated with some actual button combos to keep combat from feeling exactly the same no matter who you're fighting. And trust me, all combat starts to get stale, especially when you only fight one of three enemy types, generic thugs, generic Russians, or the city's new task force enforcement law agency. Attention all task force personnel. You are authorized to begin phase one of the suppression initiative. Repeat, phase one of the suppression initiative is a go. Boss battles, which are extremely important in a Spider-Man game with such a colorful cast of, of villains, end up disappointing here, consisting of either finding a single repetitive pattern that never deviates or changes at all, then exploiting it, or one that's entirely interrupted with uninspired quick time events. <laughs> hey, what the hell? Quick time! <laughs> Jesus Christ, am I just gonna punch him all the way down? <laughs> Talk about repetitive. Whatever happened to you, it's affected your mind. Then there's the city. It's absolutely lifeless. When viewed up close, there's a serious lack of detail, life, believability. All the NPCs have the exact same animations, character models repeat extremely often, and their daily life pathing is so simplistic it's painful. What are you doing there, lady? Huh? Time's running out. You going someplace? Huh? You gonna go home? Huh? Is that where you're going? Huh? You got six seconds to get to your house. You better hurry. Okay. Maybe you want to take a taxi instead? Okay. In the smaller city map, you'll hop from main mission to main mission, whose purpose is to throw a rogues gallery of villains at you that are tied together with a much less interesting story than the film. And peppered between these are the side missions in the game. Now the side missions are composed of this new hero menace mechanic that initially shows some promise, but quickly falls apart into one of the most annoying mechanics since Superman on Xbox 360. You know, the city health. It, it's, it, it seems like a great idea, but the execution is poor. You can stop petty crimes by beating up three or four thugs, rescuing people from burning buildings if you can get Spider-Man to actually enter the damn windows, Hey! I said I wanted my butt medium rare! Ah, that's a great way to fall on my tuchus! No way am I letting anyone set off bombs in my city! <laughs> uh, participate in car chases, which are pretty cool. <laughs> Or you could stop bombs from exploding if you can actually figure out where to throw the damn things. 
By doing all these, you get a news report from the Daily Bugle showing a boring, still image summarizing your success. Why can't they all be like that? Business owners praised Spider-Man for improvement not just in crime rates, but also in the local economy. Hardly a worthy reward. You then earn points in a hero bar, which keeps you on the city's good side. However, if you ignore these side quests for too long, you will become a menace in the eyes of the media and people, and the new task force will begin attacking you on site, or putting up nets to block your progress, and generally piss you the hell off. Uh, one final, what the fuck is that? What are you doing? I'm a menace to society. You want to stop me? You can't stop me with your fucking walls. Walls don't stop me. Spider-Man, Spider-Man. Ow! Up and over. Up and over. Be -be 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 Shut up. Oh, no. The problem is, is that as the game goes on, you are presented with far too many of these side missions that you're forced to either grind through or be harassed. Maybe if they were less similar each time, less repetitive, and if the rewards were up to par, it would be acceptable, but they're just not. It's fucking annoying. So, Spidey, the task force wants to know how many petty crimes did you stop today? Uh, one? Uh, oh, two! Okay, are uh, you sure? Oh, three! <laughs> very good, very good. Well, thank you for playing. I'm sorry, you actually needed five or seven. Yeah! Electro-net! Electro-net! Yeah! <laughs> Time to wrangle up a spider! Yeah! <laughs> Come on, boy! And sure, some of the races start to remind you of Superman 64. Ah! 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 Where's the final one? Ah! Ah! Where is it? Oh, no! It's on the last one! <laughs> Forsaken me with the amazing Spider-Man 2 races. But there's actually the reward of a really cool Hornet costume at the end of the races. The long, hard journey for the last costume in the game. The final costume. Will it have been worth the time? I see a new costume in there. It looks pink. What? The Hornet! Pink and turquoise! Cool! That's crazy! That looks nothing like Spider-Man! Well, that's an awesome costume! This one straight out of a Halloween store. I also appreciated playing a bit as Peter in between combat sections. The dialogue options are there to help conversations feel more interactive but they are false window dressing. There's no real choice here. Just the order in which you ask the questions and end the conversation, which could have just as easily been done by an uninterrupted CGI scene, which this time it appears they were too lazy to even bother with. We've been gathering intelligence on this organization for some time. But no one's been able to stop them yet. Not the police, not Spider-Man. Don't say that name to me! Spider-Man. Spider-Man. You know, and being a superhero game, there is for sure an upgrade system to Spider-Man as you unlock more abilities. However, you could play the entire game without upgrading any of that shit and you'll still make it through fine. I almost did it. 
which really hammers home how crappy most of the upgrades actually are. And that's the story of the game. For everything that's fun, there's an equally botched aspect that holds it back from, you know, gaining its stride. There's a really awesome game here, but it's undercooked. It's taken out of development, the development oven far too early before it was ready for mass consumption. Unless Activision or whoever owns the Spider-Man games takes this a bit more serious as AAA titles, we may not see an above average Spider-Man game for a long time. Especially if all we're gonna get are movie based licensed games. The final verdict for The Amazing Spider-Man 2 is a 5 out of 10. It is average at best and hilariously glitchy at its worst. I'm thankful they decided not to charge full price for this mixed bag. I picked it up for only $40. Even so, wait for a price drop before picking this one up. Then consider it when it does because there's enough here to make it worth going through at least once. Until then, I'll see you guys on the next Angry Joe Show. No, no, build that tower taller. The Oscorp tower needs to be taller. Oh, shit. Spider Man, now! Now! Ah! Oh, that's nasty, nasty. Wow, look.